In this video, we have a differential equation, and we're going to try to solve it. So the first step will be to write this differential equation in the form m dx plus n dy equals 0. And then we're going to check to see if it's what's called an exact differential equation. And if it is, then we can solve it using that method. So in order to do this, we will start by taking this piece here on the right and subtracting it over to the left. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite what we have here on the left. So x minus y to the seventh plus y squared sine x dx. And then we're subtracting this entire piece here. So minus parentheses 7x y to the sixth plus 2y cosine x parentheses dy, and this is all equal to zero. So all we've done so far is we've taken the piece on the right-hand side over here, and we've subtracted it over to the left-hand side. Now, we're still not quite in the form that we want to be in. And notice there is a plus sign in this form. So we have a minus sign. So let's go ahead and distribute our minus sign. So x minus y to the seventh plus y squared sine x dx, and then plus, and we'll distribute the negative 1, so negative 7x y to the 6th minus 2y cosine x, and then dy, and all of this is equal to 0. So now we finally have it in the form that we want. So we we can do now is use the method of checking for exactness. So this piece here in yellow is our m, and this piece over here in yellow is going to be our n. And so basically to check to see if something is, is exact, you compute two partial derivatives and then you see if they're equal. So the first one you compute is del m, del, and the way I memorize it is it's the other variable. So there's an x here, so I know to put a y here. It's a cheap memory trick. So this is the partial derivative of m with respect to y. So whenever you're computing this, you have to treat all of the other variables as constants. So all of the x's are constants. So the derivative of x here is going to be 0. Here we'll have negative 7y to the 6 using the power rule. And the sine function here is like a constant because it's a function of x. So we basically just take the derivative of y squared, so we get 2y sine x. All right, now, we're half, now we have to compute del n, del, and it's the other variable. So there's a y, so we use x. Really powerful, cheap memory trick. So now all of the y's are constants. So when we take this derivative here, the derivative of x is 1, and the y to the 6th and the negative 7 hang out. So we just get negative 7 y to the 6th. And then here, the derivative of cosine is negative sine, but there's already a negative here, so that's going to give us plus 2y sine x. And I haven't looked because I'm still writing. So if these are the same, it's exact. I'm looking, and yes, good stuff. It's exact. So the DE is exact. So now we can solve it. And solving it is not really that hard. So before we solve it, though, let me explain what it means to be exact. It's always better to understand what's going on. So because it's exact, that means that there exists some function. So I'll actually write it. This means there exists. The backwards E means exists. A function f. So there exists a function f such that, as t means such that, we have del f del x dx plus del f del y dy equals 0. So there is some function f that satisfies this differential equation. In other words, this piece here in front of the dx is your del f del x. And this piece here in front of your dy is your del f del y. And the function, by the way, is of the form f of x y equals c in all of this. So this is the form of the function. This is important because when we solve this, we're going to set our answer equal to c at the end. So how do we solve it? Well, we know the piece here, the m, is actually del f del x. So to find f, 
to get rid of the del f del x, we integrate with respect to x. So we're going to integrate the first piece with respect to x. So integrating x with respect to x is going to give us x squared over 2. Integrating y to the 7th with respect to x, we treat the y to the 7th as a constant. So we just get y to the 7th times x. And then integrating sine with respect to x, well, what's a function whose derivative is sine? Negative cosine. So this is negative y squared cosine x. Again, all of the y's are constants. We're just integrating with respect to x. And because we integrated with respect to x, we have to add an unknown function of the other variable. So in this case, an unknown function of y. So I'll add a g of y. So this is f. We've just written down f, which is pretty much the answer. We just don't know g of y. So what we do now is we put an equal sign here, and then we look at n. We know n is del f del y. So in order to retrieve f, we have to integrate with respect to y. And we do that, and we set it equal because they're both f. So this piece here is your f, and the piece on the right-hand side is also going to be f. So f is equal to f. So integrating with respect to y, so we're integrating this piece here, this, this negative x, negative 7x, y to the 6. When you integrate that, you're going to get negative 7x, y to the 7 over 7. And the 7s will cancel. So we'll get negative x, y to the 7th. Again, integrating with respect to y. And then this piece here, when you integrate this, so if you have negative 2y cosine x, and you integrate that with respect to y, you'll get negative 2y squared over 2 cosine x. So the 2s cancel. So we get minus y squared cosine x. And we integrated with respect to y, so we add an unknown function of x. So plus h of x. Again, integrating the first piece with respect to y, we get y to the 7 over 7. That cancels with the 7. Integrating the second piece with respect to y, we get a y squared over 2. That cancels uh, the 2. And then we add an unknown function of the other variable. Okay, so this is f also. So these are both equal to f. So now our goal is to write the answer down. So f of x, y, let's start by reading it here. So we know that's part of it. Right? We know that's part of f of x, y, because this whole thing here is f of x, y. So we can write it down. And let me write it a little bit neater, x squared over 2. And then we also have that, so minus x, y to the 7. And then we also have minus y squared cosine x. What about the g of y? Well, we don't know what that is. So now we look over here. Well, we've already written that down, right? Because these, are, these, are, these both are equal, so we don't write it again. And we've already written this down, so we don't, we don't write it again. And so that must be it. So this is equal to c. And that would be the final answer. So this piece here on the left-hand side is your f. If you're wondering about the g and the h, um, they represent different things. So in this case, h of x must be equal to x squared over 2, right? Because these equa this equation, it's an equation. These bo both of these sides are equal. So this must be x squared over 2. And everything else matches. What about the g of y? Well, that just must be 0 because there's no pure function of y over here. I hope this video has been helpful.